Hey guys, Scott here. Bonus video today. I uh, randomly read Wikipedia articles about random things because I have nothing better to do with my life. And uh, I remembered this story I learned about in, uh, ge I don't know, geology or something. It was like in middle school or high school or something. Um, it's called The Fable of Imimar. It's uh, from like the Aztec, Mayan, I don't know. It's like around that like time period. Uh, but basically... I just wanted to go over the story because I think it's pretty interesting and it kind of relates to a, a certain thing. So um, the the general gist of the story is there was this uh, pretty advanced civilization. I mean, like advanced, like, you know, for the time, not like, you know, the, the ancient precursor TV trope thing. I'm talking about like, you know, they had like irrigation and farming and stuff like that. Um, like even like mild forms of bathrooms and stuff like that. So they were like an advanced civilization. Uh, it was pretty prosperous, but then um, over time they started having like hostilities amongst each other because there were like uh, the, there were farmers and the farmers would well, like the ones that worked harder would get more food and they would get more money. They'd have more success. And the smaller farmers that didn't have the resources to even have fields that big and stuff like that, they started suffering more and more. Some of them started starving. So they're starting to, uh, they were starting to be like an imbalance between the, uh, the hierarchy and like the social hierarchy and the caste system and all that stuff. So they were starting to be like uh, infighting and warring and stuff like that. So the priests of the Nahuatl people um, went to their temple for their god and they they prayed for like seven days and seven nights or something. And then on the seventh day or two weeks later, um, this giant like stone effigy of the god appeared. And so they were all like, oh, my God, they were all like reverent for it. And the effigy spoke to them and said, I am here to bring peace and balance back to your people. Um, there will be no more, you know fighting between you due to perceived imbalances and social hierarchy and all that stuff. It'll just be uh, everything nice and uniform. I, I'm here to make things just and fair. And they were like, oh my God, what, what, what do we need to do for this? And he, the God was like, oh, the best part, you must do nothing, change nothing about how you live your lives. I will do all. Um, and so they were like, this is awesome. So for uh, a little while, the fighting seemed to have stopped, even though like nothing really like changed. They were so inspired by this that nothing really stopped. They were asking for this for their, from their god, and then they seemed to have delivered it. So even if it was a self-fulfilling prophecy, they still felt like everything was better. But then over time, people started wanting to placate this god because they thought that they were resulting in the prosperity of their civilization. So these notable farmers would start farming more and more. And they would start working longer and longer hours from, you know, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 hours. They would be sitting there sweating under the Mesopotamian Valley for like 17 hours a day. Just absolutely going insane because they wanted to get as much like wheat or something to give to their god as like tribute. And so we have a new problem arising where these people were just literally sweating their ass off just trying to placate essentially nothing, just an intangible something with no promise of reward or anything. And their god, the effigy, didn't even tell them to do this. He just said, do nothing, I'll take care of it. But humans just want to placate their god, so they just kept working more and more and more. And basically the whole point of this fable is they, they work themselves to death. All the notable farmers eventually just kill themselves trying to one-up the other farmer, um, again, literally sweating themselves to death in the valley because they just want to make their god happy with them. And so all the farmers die out, no one's got food anymore, and the entire civilization crumbles. And the whole point of it is, who's at fault? The the god or the people? And I always thought this was fascinating because, to me, it's clearly the fault of the people. Like, the god just came in there and said, hey, I'm going to try to make things better for you guys. I see everyone thinks everything is, you know, all of your social hierarchies are imbalanced. I'm going to take care of everything. It's going to be fine. You guys keep doing what you're doing. I'll take care of it. And so that's all the God did. And then the people decided to change against what the God asked them to do. And that brought about their own downfall. So to me, in that scenario, it's the fault of the people. Now, I'm not sure if anyone's picked up the super obvious analogy I've been doing with this whole bullshit article I made. But this is just MMR in Dead by Daylight. This whole literal MMR God is just the concept of MMR. The whole reason that Behavior made MMR was to make it more fair for everybody else. They didn't tell you to play more sweaty. They didn't tell you to change anything. They just said, hey, we're going to do this system. Keep playing how you're currently playing. It should adjust to how you're playing. And your game should be more fair. They should feel more fair overall. Less, you know, stomps and stuff like that. Uh, your game should feel better. But over time, the entire community just decided, 
I don't care. I'm going to just play really sweaty now to get this intangible thing. I'm going to placate this intangible literal god that gives me nothing in return. I can't even see it. There's no reward for sweating and getting your MMR higher. You get nothing for it. And so everyone blames MMR for this. And the whole point of all this is I mostly blame the players for it. It's a little bit behavior's fault, and I'll get onto that in a bit. But I blame this mostly on the players for trying to placate this intangible thing that is MMR. There is just no justified reason for it. I have not changed my playstyle in six years. I'm playing exactly the same as I have. I might lose a little bit more now, and okay, but I'm not miserable. I'm not just sweating my ass off every game, just like hating everything, and everyone else is not doing the same thing, because you don't have to. There's no actual justifiably good reason to try to get your invisible number up. Now, if MMR was a visible number, this would be, I wouldn't even make this video. I would be trying to raise that number. I'm a streamer. I want people to think of me highly skill-wise. So I would be trying to get that number really high. I want 2,500 MMR or whatever the hell would be considered high. I would want to get that. And even the justification for sweating would make more sense then because, okay, you actually have a literal ward to go for. I mean, I get it. That's annoying, but sure. I understand why you're doing this, but we just don't have any of that. There's no reason. But let's go over the second point. What is actually able to be blamed on behavior? See, here's the whole thing. Everyone blames the sweaty upbringing and stuff like that to MMR. I'm telling you right now, the reason everyone has gotten sweatier and better at the game is because the game's older. I'll just solve that issue right now. No discussion needed. Nothing to do with any of this shit. It's because people have been playing the game for a longer time. They've just gotten better. Less memes. You know, the fun is optimized out of every game in history over time. That's, it's as simple as that. No further discussion needed. But the whole thing with the whole blaming the MMR thing, you guys got to realize this has nothing to do with MMR. It has everything to do with behavior changing the win condition. That is the actual thing you're really complaining about. Now, it did happen to coincide that MMR and the changing of the win condition happened to happen at the same patch, so I get why people link it, but it is important not to say MMR is ruining everything. No, it's not MMR is ruining everything. The win condition changing is making things in your eyes seem like it's sweaty overall, because there was, you know, the emblem system where you could, you know, not kill everybody, but still get a decent result by spreading pressure and stuff like that. Let me put it this way. You could have an MMR system that took into account the amount of hooks you got, what killer you are, what map you're on for the survivor side, how long you were in a chase, um, how many people you healed, how many people you unhooked, how many resources you used, um, what items you used, what map you're on, if there's any modifiers for that. MMR could have accounted for all of this, and MMR would have been great. It would have been something that truly accounts for all the stuff we wanted to account for, which proves that it's not really MMR you guys have a problem with. It's what they changed the win condition to. If you take it the other side too, you could have a... Imagine the emblem system, and you just chopped off three categories and only left the sacrifice system. That's basically what they did here. But again, nothing to do with MMR. That's just the changing of the win condition. So if you want to blame behavior for something, blame them for changing the win condition. An MMR system is something that simply tries to pair people of equal skill together. But you have to have a good win condition for that to each, like to actually have an effect. If there's no good win condition, then, I mean, right now, our system is basically just like the old system. It's just the emblem system, but, I mean, everyone is, you're still being regarded in almost the exact same way because the emblem system didn't quite nail the spreading of pressure. It did it a little bit better, but a tweaked emblem system would have been much better than what we currently have, but that could have just as easily been an MMR system as well. So basically the whole point is there is no reason to blame at the MMR system for people being sweaty. People have decided to be sweaty to placate an invisible number for whatever reason. They just feel like they need to do that. If you do want to blame behavior for something, talk about changing the win condition from kills to, you know, whatever they used to have, which was some mishmash of a bunch of random shit. That was better in my opinion. Um, so that's really the actual issue. So MMR is fine, changing a win condition, actual problem. But mostly I just blame the players for trying to placate something that you can't even fucking see. What is the point? I just don't get it. Um, but that is overall it. I just thought I'd make this dumb video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.